Hello everyone and welcome to this guide in Path of the Damned uh, in Pillars of Eternity 2. Uh, in this guide I'm gonna go over all the mechanics in the game, what to think about, how to gear and so on, uh, how to engage in combat, what's efficient, what's not efficient, and basically every mechanics in the game. Uh, on this first screen, on the start screen, I'm just gonna show you a button that I think many of you have missed. It's actually this one. Down here, if you click this little symbol here, you get some additional challenges you can do in the game. Uh, we're not gonna do it for this uh, guide, but it's here for you to explore. Uh, for example, the ultimate challenge is the hardest one you can do. Uh, you can read all about it here. So, check that out if you want. Uh, another thing that I can recommend you, I have one add-on installed here. It calls Enhanced User Interface. What that do is it will show you the buffs and debuffs called Inspiration and Affliction in this game more easily uh, to understand them. And I will show you later on here how it looks. So it, it will just enhance your experience to understand it. Yeah. So we're gonna start a new game here. So what mode to pick? Uh, turn uh, real time with the pause or uh, turn based mode. The original game was uh, created only with this mode. Uh, and was intended to play in this mode. Uh, and if you want to have the full experience, how it's intended to be played, I can strongly recommend if you play this your first time. Uh, Turn-based mode was implemented later on. Uh, it's good implemented, but some mechanics are kind of broken in this mode. For example, if you go high on action speed stats, uh, if you have a melee character, for example, with swords or something, you want to hit fast and uh, kill enemy f uh, enemies fast. In turn-based mode, you only get one uh, hit per round on the turn. So every every character you have and every mobs have one turn each every round, and you only. You're only gonna hit one time, so even you have high action speed. What it does actually is just the what on the place in the list. You you are, it's your turn on the round, the start order precision. Uh, of course, it's better to start uh, before all the enemies, but it's not worth the stats to put it in. So in that case. Uh, if you, if you want to play a melee character and be really good at it with DPS and so on, real time with pulse but it will be much better actually. Some other things here that the tank mechanics is kind of broken because if you have your full party in stealth uh, and just unstealth your tank, every mob will actually go on your tank and they will stay there. They will not go away even if you don't have them engage. Uh, and it's easy, really, really easy to tank by doing that, so it's kind of broken. In real time with pause, uh, if you start with the same thing, you unstealth your tank, you get engagement and tank as many as you can. But if you start to do heavy damage with the backliners, they will actually go and try to kill them. So it's started up to you what mode to play. If you don't have any specific preference, I will recommend real time with pause. And this is what I'm going to play in this guide. So we are going to play on Path of the Dam difficulty, the highest one. We're going to choose level scaling to all. And we're going to check this, only scale upwards. Barrett Blessings are new game plus mechanics. So for doing achievements in the game, you get Barrett Blessings points. As you see up here, I have all the achievements in the game. So it's a maximum of 105. And what you can do when you start a new game, you can get different perks and so on. For example, start with 5,000 gold, 50,000 gold. You can start with a map explorer somewhere here. You can start that loot is better. Uh, or Idea has a pet slot, for example. 
and stuff like that. We're not going to use this here. Trial of Iron mode is you only have one save, so if you die, it's game over. Not going to use that. Expert mode is it will turn off some helpers for you. And if this is your first time playing, uh, I really recommend you not check any of these two. Because if you're really going to learn the mechanics in this game, you can't really do that with expert mode on. Okay, so let's start here. We will skip the intro. And all the dialogue boxes and so on, I'm just gonna skip it. An aged you like that. So I'm planning to do uh, some videos regarding this. In this first video I'm just gonna talk about character creation Sit. and Please. what to think about and so on. Thank you for joining us. A and here you can port your PoE one save if you want, if you play that. It will affect the story, what choices you did and so on in the first game, in the second game. Uh, if you don't have that, you can just start how you did in the first game. I'm gonna choose a ben Benevolent. Can I ever pronounce that? Sorry. Soul. Does everything good? The tool. Tell me. Do you ship you? Can you ship you the beat that you know? She delicately plays good before when you can. So here, uh, here you can import a character. It's a pre-made character if you want to use that. I can use that here. We are gonna start from scratch. If you choose a female or male uh, character, it has no impact in the game. So just pick your own preferences here. I'm gonna pick a male for this one. So here are the races that exist in the game. Uh, what race to pick here is it don't, doesn't have that much of an impact uh, but if you really want to minimax the game you can pick some with the good stats and uh, every race here has a sub race there with some benefits some perks but if you're gonna enjoy the game play play the race you like to play it's, it not, doesn't affect that much we can talk a little bit about it so Alma Big guys, uh, plus two might. One of the stats, and they have two sub races. So the island Alma have a perk that when you go in uh, low water, deep sand and mud and stuff, uh, you are s really slow when you walk in it. But this sub race can ignore that and run as usual. It's really not that often you encounter this. So it's not worth as a sub race. You're much better off if you pick a coastal alma that gives you resistance to might afflictions. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about afflictions and inspirations later on. I'm gonna show you here. So this is the add-on. Uh, as you see here, it's color coded for might, and you see it's a little symbol, the arm, and a one and a two and a three after. So. This is why the add-on is really good, because normally in game when you hover, uh, like if you have a word staggered, it just says what it does, but it doesn't say it's a might affliction. And it's important to know uh, how to counter that, so what the cost, I will talk more about it, but so the add-on is showing it's an easy way to understand what the affliction or inspiration, what stats it uh, belongs to. So every stats, might and uh, constitution uh, and all that have one affliction and one inspiration each. And it has uh, how strong it is, like one to three. For this example, my affliction has staggered, dazed and stunned. So staggered is level one, dazed is level two and stunned is level three. So that's how the add-on works. Uh, if you're gonna pick something here, I recommend that you get with the resistance to might afflictions. Uh, what it actually do is, if you get a uh, might affliction on you, for example, if they try to cast stun on you, 
in game. Uh, what the resistance do is it actually downgrades it one step. So if they cast stun on you, you will actually get dazed. Or if they cast dazed on you, you will be staggered. And if they cast stagger on you, nothing happens. So the resistance is really good, especially for the frontliners or tank. Uh, you can never be stunned if you have that, for example. So there are some abilities and items in the game that gives you resistances. They don't stack, so make sure you don't get two of the same. You can't be immune to it altogether if you have three items or so on that have might afflictions. So this, this is the best if you want to have some sub race. Uh, same with the dwarf here. They have two might. Uh, one constitution and minus one dexterity. So the boar, Borland Dwarf has a perk that if this uh, all wilders can see, can see whose fungals and plants and wilders, ogres, skulls, trolls, withrak and syrups. So this is different mobs in the game. Uh, if you attack them and you miss, do a miss it will, uh, will upgrade it to a grace, so you do some damage. Not that worth, actually. Uh, it's much better to get the Mountain Dwarf in that case, that gets here, Constitution, Affliction, Resistance. So you can't be enfeebled. Uh, same with Elves. Here you get some Burn and Freeze armor rating, but the Resistance to Dexterity Affliction instead. So pick this one. Humans. All humans is the same for uh, the perk. And when they get blooded or near death. Blooded is when you are below 50% health. Or below 25% health. You get the bonus to accuracy and damage. Can be good. It doesn't matter what you pick here. It's just for looks. And Orlands. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Heart Orlands has. They convert some hits to crits. I don't think this stacks in the game. And there are a lot of items that do the same. And here are your resistance to resolve afflictions. That is much better. And Terrified, for example, is that it the highest. Uh, Tier 3 here, if you're immune to that, is really good. Because our, if you are terrified, you can't do any action at all. You just run around it and do nothing. So the resistance is uh, best to go for if you pick a sub race. Uh, Godlikes are a bit, little bit different uh, because of the strange heads that can't use a headpiece. So you see here, and Though those sub races have a little better perk than others because of that. So, yeah, Death God likes. They gain increased power level when they are near death. Uh, I think this is one of the worst. You can pick it if you think it looks cool or something, but near death, if you are below 25% health. You're never going to, of course you're going to be that, but you're not going to be that for very long. Because you need to heal up them instantly if they're so low health, especially on Path of the Damned. So I think this perk is quite bad. Uh, power level, what that is, it's basically you do more uh, damage with spells and so on and healing, uh, the more power level you have. Uh, Fire God likes can be really good tanks uh, or frontliners uh, overall because they have a resistance to burn damage so you get some uh, armor rating for burn can be good but the good thing here when you are blooded or near death you gain uh, additional armor rating armor rating is one of the most important stats in the game uh, I think many don't really understand how important that is we're going to talk in depth uh, in depth more about that later on in another video but that is a really really good perk to have and uh, they also do some burn damage but it's just a little but this is most important thing and this one moon god like uh, when you take damage when you go hurt bloody or near death 
uh, on all these stages. They will send, send out an AoE heal around you. Can be good on Puff of the Dam. And Nature Godlike uh, is one of the best uh, sub race for casters, in my opinion. Because when you are afflicted with either a Might Inspiration, Constitution Inspiration, or Dexterity Inspiration, uh, you will gain a benefit from increased power level. I think it's two plus power levels, so you will do a lot more damage and healing with spells. And as I always play uh, at the beginning of a fight, I will always buff up my party. I will always try to have a, a Might Affliction, Strong, Tenacious, or Energize. Uh, even this one, especially if I have to have a druid, you can always start to cast a robust a level 3 here. That's really, really good for tough fights. And even dexterity. Uh, not that usually you cast that actually on the, on the entire party, but these two is very often you do. Especially if you have a priest, you can call, cast strong quite easily on everyone. So I'm going to have this up all the time. Uh, meaning I have plus two power levels almost the entire fight, doing a lot more healing and damage. But, so if you are going to play a caster, and you really want to min-max, I can really recommend a nature godlike. For me, I'm going to play a melee character in the front, uh, with Kong and do with doing damage with weapons. And for that, I'm going to choose a fire godlike, to have the extra armor rating if I get hurt uh, bloody or near death this is just the body type uh, when you choose a godlike I'm gonna go with human here uh, multi-class or single class so if you're not very familiar with the game I can recommend you go with a single class but if you really want to try out the multi-class if it, you're gonna do it on any class or any character you have it I recommend it doing on your character so all your companions you get in the game you can choose to do a single class or a multi-class on them and I really recommend if you're not very familiar with the game the first time that you pl pick all your companions almost all the companions there are some exceptions for that but almost all companions as a single class because you will get so overwhelmed with all the spells in the game and you will not know what to pick to be efficient uh, you need to play this game a lot of hours to really understand what is good and not this good even I sit even now I sit here and talk to you as I pick that pick that you're not gonna remember it so pick a multi-class if you want to do it on your main character and pick single classes on almost all your companion classes so in this guide, I'm going to pick a multi-class. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about all the classes here. So all classes uh, combinations are valid. You can play ex whatever you want. Uh, but there are some rules you should uh, think about when picking. So if you want to be a frontliner, uh, if you want, you need to have some protection, especially in the path of the damn difficulty. And uh, the best classes for that are Barbarians, Fighter, and Paladin, and Monk in some cases. Uh, the absolutely best defense abilities have Fighter and Paladins. So a combination, if you want to be in the front with, this, uh, with these two, will be absolutely the best. So if you go a pure tank, for example, I can re really recommend a fighter paladin. You will be literally more or less uh, unkillable. They have so many good defense abilities here, like all the resistances, all the models for uh, really good protection and things. You have this one, refreshing defenses. So you have as a as a fight, you have really really many many really <laughs> good defense abilities. Same with Paladins. He has some really good defenses here. Same with this one. Get some aura around all the party. Plus armor rating and health regeneration. 
Uh, I will talk more about exactly what spells to take and what to think about uh, on all your companions uh, later on in another video. I'm just going to talk in general here what combination is good. So if you want to be an, a fronter pure tank, I can recommend a fighter paladin. Uh, if you want more, a little bit more of a TPS role, uh, a barbarian paladin, barbarian fighter. Can get away with a barbarian rogue or barbarian monk as well. Uh, if you want to play a pure rogue, a single class, that will be actually quite hard, especially in this difficulty, because in your party you always want to have at least two frontliners that can tank all the mobs, and a pure rogue have almost no defenses at all, they're all about the damage here. Uh, what a rogue I really excel at is to like jump on the back line with this ability, escape, you can jump over some mobs, uh, take out the backliners on casters really fast, so that's really good, but they won't take much of a beating, they will, and, and if you play on path of the dam, they will die, die quite a lot. So if you want to play a rogue and DPS, I recommend a fighter rogue, that is a swashbuckler, or a barbarian rogue maybe, or maybe a monk as well. So let's talk a little bit of each class here. Uh, a barbarian, uh, a single barbarian, a solo barbarian class. I don't think it's fun enough to play it. Uh, they can be quite good at it, but I think they have too few abilities here. Really, what you, you what you do is almost almost use this one, barbaric blow. Uh, the other one is occasionally more or less. Some self buffs and so on. So it's kind of boring, in my opinion. Uh, but they can be really good if you combine them with something else. Uh, and every class here has a subclass. I'm not going to go through every one of them. But just pick the subclass that makes sense to you. So, for example, a barbarian has Berserker. Uh, so when I go in Berserk, this one, Frenzy, they get uh, a buff, two buffs actually, so they get, let's see here. yeah, they get strong and fit, and if you take a Berserker, it will be upgraded to level 2 of them both, so it's tenacious and hardy, that is really good. Uh, you get some hit to crit conversa uh, conversation uh, with melee and conscious attack. Uh, what what uh, barbarian also do? They do a small AOE around the target you hit, so they do cleave damage on everything. Uh, the penalty here is you get confused. That is really bad because you will hit your friends that they are nearby. It can be uh, fixed later on with some talent here, I think that you are immune to uh, intellect afflictions. I think they have somewhere here. Or not immune, but uh, resistance, so it will be downgraded, so you're not getting confused. But you cannot see your health from Frenzit, and that is a really, really big issue. Uh, if you don't see your health, especially half of the damage, you got, oh, there I died, and there I died again. So I cannot really recommend it, even if the buffs are good, the uh, level 1 buffs are also good. So I don't really recommend this subclass. Uh, it can be quite hard to manage, and you take raw damage continuously with white friends as well. I tried it one time and I died so many times because I didn't, couldn't see my health. Core Pacer, totally useless in my opinion. You can use, you can eat Kif. Uh, Buddies that uh, you have killed. Kif is all the uh, smart animals, if you say so. Humans, all, all the uh, playable races is Kif. Like Arma, uh, humans, and so on. You can eat them to get back, back some rage. Rage is the thing you use when you use abilities. So, for example, this costs two rage, this costs one rage, and so on. 
So you have a limited amount of rage every time you do a battle. But, and you can get some back using this, but it's not worth. Uh, I recommend good new subclass if you play a barbarian. I don't gonna go through everyone, but that is actually the best class here. And the subclass, no subclass. Shanter uh, is one of my favorite classes to play. I really love them, and they are really good for any combination actually, if you want the class. Uh, we can take a little look about the spells, so how, how they work. They are a bard, if you know what that is. So they play uh, passive uh, songs, chants calls, so it's basically a song. That gives you some buff, debuffs and so on. So this one for example, it gives minus 10 pierce damage, minus 10 slash damage for 6 seconds. Uh, how it works when you play songs, it will play the so same song over and over. Uh, you can put up that they, they play the first song and when it's done you can start the second song and when it's done it will start over with the first song. Or you can just have one song play over and over to have this buff all the time. Or you can have uh, this one and they will actually overlap it uh, themselves uh, when it plays so you will have both buff for a duration then you will only have this one for a duration. Until you start this one, you have both again, and so on. Uh, and what I do when I play a Shanter, uh, I will have, you, you have, in game you can set up four different songs to play. As a different rows, how, what songs to play on every row. I'm going to show you that more in game later, but what I do, I have one row that only plays defensive songs. For these two examples, it's really good, uh, at least at the start. And in the start of the battle, you need all the defenses you can get because that's when it's the hardest. And then I have uh, I can swap to my B songs, for example, that do more DPS things. For example, this one, 15% uh, damage uh, deltas burn with weapons, really really good. Or for simplified, so I can start with this one. And maybe. Here, 20% reload time, 20% recovery time, minus with range weapon. So if you have a ranger in your party, this can be really good. So hit faster and so on. More DPS. And I have a third row with healing things, like this one. One health restore every second. So it takes... This, uh, all songs are passive, you don't need to do anything with them. Uh, so they are an area around you. Uh, so if I can that one, I think you have some... Let's see here. Yeah, you have some with shields here, something. Yep, uh, friendly aura, 50% healing down for 10 seconds. So I have a healing row that I can swap to and it's critical. And when you play a song, you get a point. Uh, that you can use here on the active abilities and here you have something called offensive invocations and you have something called non-offensive invocations and this actually affects what subclass you take but if you have if you want if you don't have really a frontliner except to tank you can focus more on some on creatures like skeletons or ogres that are really good uh, like a meat wall especially skeletons in the uh, beginning of the game summon them if there are a hard fight upcoming uh, later on when you get the ogres they are really really good to keep uh, the mobs off your backliner they're really good tanks you have some good debuffs here as well. So this one upgraded to this one. Uh, it will give you minus two armor rating uh, for 12 seconds. First one and upgraded here. Each time the enemy takes damage, the effect's duration is increased. Meaning that if you cast this at the start of the battle, not everyone is a cone that is cast from you. You can keep that debuff up the entire fight. Uh, as long as you cast the uh, AoE spells on everyone. So this one is extremely good for that. Uh, it will cast lightning damage and bounce upgraded and do 
really good amount of damage as well. And you can spam this because it's only cost. Uh, it costs three phrases, but if you pick like um, Skull, for example, offensive evocation costs minus one phrase. So this one and this one you can spam all the time, and this one as well that is uh, paralyzed. It's a level three affliction that will paralyze an entire group. And it, it will cost, if you take a Skull, for example, because it's an office offensive invocation, it will only cost two phrases. Meaning that you can crowd control an entire group for... Uh, you will get many more phrases later on. And you, you, you may start with like eight phrases or something uh, late. So you can cast this four times, meaning you can paralyze an entire group for 60 seconds. They can't do, do anything. So it can't be really, really good. So that's a little bit about the Chanter. They can exceed in debuffs. Uh, and you have some really good buffs here as well. You can buff strong and steadfast. 5 plus might, 5 constitution, 5 resolve for everyone. Uh, I tend to go this as... Get some ogres. I have this one. Because that this is one of the best debuffs in the game. Because you can have have it an uptime of 100% if you're efficient with it. And some good songs to combine it with. So Chant is a really good multi-class. Uh, with any, any class actually. So this Scald. You see here. Melee weapon critical hits have a 50% chance to grant a phrase. So if you are a frontliner. Uh, using melee weapons. It can be really, really good. So you get uh, extra phrases. This is the points I'm talking about to cast more evocations. Dependently here is that uh, non-offensive invocation costs plus one phrase. But when you choose uh, a subclass for any of the classes, just check what to do. Think what I'm going to do. Do I am going to be a melee? Do I going to be a supporter? Do I going to be a DPS, uh, ranged DPS with weapons, or go, uh, go, uh, are I going to be a caster, casting spells, and pick the subclass that is most been, uh, most suitable for that? Use your brains, so to speak. Uh, a cipher is kind of uh, similar to a chanter uh, in that case, in that sense that they will do damage with weapons they get focus and focus they will spend on active abilities here so the thing with cyphers and shanters they will never run out of resources you can always cast spells with them uh, even if you don't have the resource uh, right away you can just wait for a song to finish play then you get new resources and cast new spells same with the cypher as long as you do damage with weapon you get focus and you can cast uh, active spells with them. So, if you want to play a cipher, that can uh, actually exceed at debuffing and doing some damage and doing some buffing. So it's uh, entirely up to you what to focus. Uh, for example, if you see here, this is a buff. All buffs I have the keyword echo. And if we take some debuffs here, they are called deceptions uh, in the keyword. And you have some damage dealing abilities called Shred. And what I see often when people play this game, uh, and what's really important, especially on higher difficulty, I see them pick on all characters they play, they just pick damage, damage, damage on all of the abilities. They don't really care about the debuffs and the inspirations and so on. And that is a really big mistake. Because if you just focus damage abilities, you will actually do less damage. Because debuffing, make, removing armor and so on is so important to be efficient with your spells and uh, with your melee weapons. That you will actually, if you don't do it, you will actually do much less damage. Especially on Path of the Dam. Because uh, on Path of the Dam, I think every mob monster will get uh, an additional 2 armor rating. And some other bonus. Uh, they have a higher deflection and all defenses as well. <clears throat> so, uh, 
So if you want to play <clears throat> a cipher, uh, pick some debuffs, pick some buffs, pick some damage. Uh, especially the really excellent debuffing. Uh, examples: this this one, uh, full AoE. You can ca cast it at the start of the battle. Uh, everyone gets flanked. <clears throat> they get minus 10 deflex and one minus armor rating. That is really good. Uh, in order to flank, you need to stand on each side of a mob to get them flanked to get this debuff on them. But uh, you can just call, cast this on everyone, and everyone gets flanked automatically. This will do. A huge amount extra in the damage uh, if you have this debuff up. Uh, this is also really good. Uh, big AoE uh, cost uh, cost frightened, for example. And the most important thing, I can't use hostile abilities, uh, meaning they will just use normal weapon attacks. Really, really good debuff, sickening. Minus 5 constitution, minus 25% uh, healing received. They will get less HP, easy for you to kill them. So try to focus a little bit of both here. Uh, what you go for. If you want to... Remember just if you uh, pick a pure cipher. You need to have to do good damage with weapons to get a lot of focus. But you can combine them with both... Uh, as a backliner uh, 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 or a frontliner. So they're, they're really good uh, combinations here. Uh, a druid uh, are actually one of the best casters to do AOE uh, damage and they have some really really good healing. Uh, if you go a subclass here, if you're gonna play a backliner caster, I can recommend, especially on Path of the Dem, to go a life giver. A life giver will give, receive all the healing spells for free up to here. Uh, they will get everyone if you play pro, pure class of course, but if you multi-class you will only get to the level uh, 7 here. So that's the thing, if you multi-class you will not pick from the last two rows uh, at the have ma max level. So that's the uh, drawback on playing a multi-class. Uh, there are some really, really good healing spells. Uh, and they are, even if you should always bring a priest with you, uh, in my opinion, there can be some really good backup healers when needed. So, and also they get... Uh, they have something called Spirit Shift here, so you can pick uh, an animal that you have that you can swap to uh, in fight. That has some different perks here. Uh, beer, for example, so you get increased armor rating. Boars, you have uh, higher health regeneration and uh, inflict raw damage. Wolf to see here. Yeah, they can knock enemies prone, cat you attack faster, and the stag you get some defenses. Uh, if you want to play uh, a frontliner uh, and you want to use any of this really, you need to multi-class a druid more or less to be efficient because they are a caster class. But if you uh, if you multi-class them and want to go have use the spirit shift things, you can go a shifter. Then you can actually go to you get all of this. You don't you don't need to pick here. So you get all the different uh, hair that you can swap to in combat, and you can focus more on the second uh, class you have the multi-class like a rogue warrior maybe. Uh, and in these forms you get some additional damage and armor and all that and you can take just the passives here There are some spells that like, you can use but most of the part focus passive and take the active spells on the multi-class but I think uh, a druid really exile in casting AOE abilities. They actually do 
uh, one of the most damaged AOE abilities in the game, especially the highest one here. And in Path of Dam, a backup healer when it's crucial, when it's critical, I need really much healing right now, and that's quite often. You can swap into your spirit form, because if you do that as a gear life giver, you give it plus two to re revelation power level, you will do even more healing. Uh, the drawback of this uh, subclass, you can't cast any creature summon spells, but I really don't like them anyways in this. They have like summon uh, blights and summon some fire stag. Never use them. Don't like them. And when you're not spirit shifted, the spirit shift uh, is just for some duration. But when you're not uh, spirit shifted, and uh, after it's ended, uh, if you used it, your healing will do less healing. So uh, it's really good if you want to have some good AoE damage and uh, some emergency healing. I can really recommend a druid. And a good multi-class combination uh, can be a shanted druid actually. To focus the druid on most of the most damage abilities and backup healing and the shanter as this one the debuffing you can spam this as damage and crowd control and the songs to protect and buff your other parties so this is a really good combination uh, fighter plate you, if you want to pure, play a pure fighter, the best is to go tank with it, or some semi-tank DPS, if you want not. So we, we can talk a little bit about the companions you receive in the game. Uh, it's a little bit spoily, but you get them really early on, so it's not that big of a spoil. So, the first companion you get is Edir, uh, and he is, uh, as a main class, a fighter. So he's basically your tank in the game. You can also pick him as a rogue, a pure rogue, or a combination of the both. A rogue fighter, uh, it's a swashbuckler. And if you are going to play the tank yourself, uh, I recommend him pick him as a swashbuckler and not as a pure rogue or either as a pure fighter. Uh, as I said, you need to have two, two frontliners and then if you decide to play the tank yourself, you can have you and Adair all the time, and you're f uh, good to go with that. Or if you want to play a melee character in front yourself that do more DPS, pick Adair as a fighter. The second companion you get, you get is Aloth. Uh, he's a wizard by his first choice. You can go him as a wizard fighter if you want to. Uh, I really recommend you go, and I don't remember the last option for him, but this is some wizard rogue, I think he can go. But go him as a pure class wizard. Uh, if you're gonna play a wizard yourself, they have a lot of spells. And many people here as well go just yes, damage, damage, damage. That is a huge mistake because they have some really good debuff abilities and crowd control troll abilities that you can pick so you should pick some spell damage but don't forget about the curve control or the debuff spells this for example it interrupts minus 2 armor rating that is really important and minus 10 deflection for 20 seconds that is huge you will do so much damage from the rest of uh, the people if you have that done a another good spell here that I never see anyone use when I watch streams as well is this one binding web you immobilize an, an entire group of mobs for 6 seconds, it's going to be a good opener uh, to keep them in check while you tank it up and uh, get engaged with them so they don't run on the back line and you can start cast debuffs on them. Same with this one, cast weekend, it's a good debuff, less HP and so on, but the really good is terrified. Uh, terrified is a level 3 affliction. And what that does, except for giving 5 minus resolve and f minus 3 power level so that they will less damage, is that they cannot take any action other than flee, meaning they will be useless for 15 seconds. 
It's not a huge AoE, but it can be really, really good to use that. Uh, to remove some from the fight for a while while you focus some other guys. So take some damage abilities, try to get some with different spells. Uh, so here it will do burn damage for example. Try to get something with frost as well. Uh, freeze damage. Uh, try to get some with electric uh, shock damage. So you have something to cast because some mobs are like immune to fire or immune to frost and so on. So you have try to take a little bit of mix. Uh, when it comes to subclass for a wizard, I really don't recommend any subclass here. Because you will be locked out uh, on some spells, for example. Uh, Evoker. Yeah, you lose spells from Transmution and Conjuration. That can be really good. So, no subclass here. Blood Mage is a very popular subclass to play. Uh, you don't get... Uh, you can't use Empower. Empower is that you can uh, refill your spells. Or you can empower a specific spell to make it stronger. Uh, and you get lower defenses and so on. Uh, the thing here is that you can use Blood Sacrifice to uh, receive spells back. Plus one wizard uh, as here. Yeah, restore a proportion level with a spell resource. You get some spells back. Uh, you don't really need that. Uh, there are actually a grimoire uh, as a book that we seduce in the game uh, that will give you plus to all spells that is quite easily to get and you will never run out of spells to cast. Maybe in the first couple of levels you have so few spells to cast but will, when you get some levels up you have so many spells to cast you, you never will end them all before the fight is out and even if you do, you can replenish them with the, the Empower. So, I re strongly recommend new subclass if you play Wizard. Okay, uh, Monk. I'm not really that familiar with Monks myself. I never played one fully. Uh, they are, as you can see here, a Striker as a major role and Defender. If you play a turn-based mode, I think they are the worst class ever. Because they are so dependent on hitting fast and procs and so on. And in turn base that's not really a thing. Because you get one hit every uh, every time it's your turn on the current round. So many of their effects and so on is kind of useless here. Uh, in real time with pause they can be really valid. I not so much about say about them. Because I'm not really played. It's the only class I've not, not played to full here. Uh, but they can be a really good to use uh, as a frontliner, combine them with the Paladin Fighter maybe, to get some protection as well. I think they have some protection here. Yeah, they have some protection, they, they can be like a semi tank, so you can co combine them with a Rogue maybe. Uh, Paladins is one of the most friendly first time class to play. They are really good. So they can be really good tanks and really good support. And not that really good at uh, damage dealing. They have this one as damage. Uh, can be really good. This was one of the best abilities that they have been nerfed so many times in patches. But it's still really good. So they will add fire damage and do high, high amount of damage in the game. But... It can be a really good support class. You have many, many abilities to support your allies and heal your allies and buff your allies. And I think the most best aspect of the Paladin class is the protection thing. Uh, so if you focus this, you can easily combine them with any other class here to get a really good frontliner, especially on Path of the Damn when it takes so much damage. Uh, maybe not combine it with a priest or something. That will just be strange in my opinion. But some uh, it's, it can be a good, really good combination with uh, some 
classes that utilize uh, weapon as damage. If you want to play a priest, play uh, not a multi-class in my opinion. Play a pure priest because they have so many good buffs and debuffs. Uh, I'm gonna show you more what to pick and so on when uh, in game on later videos on Suti. Uh, that is your priest. So if we talk a little bit more the companion you get. As first you get Aloth. Uh, he is your tank basically. Uh, I mean Idir. He's your tank. He's a fighter. The second one you get is Suti. Uh, you can pick her as a priest. Uh, a monk or a combination of them both. I really recommend you play her as a priest. If you don't, if you want to play a priest yourself, I recommend you go her as a pure monk, uh, and she can be your second frontliner uh, with the deer. Uh, the third one you get is Aloth. He's a wizard. As I said, pick him as a pure wizard. Really recommended. Uh, so this, if you want the full experience uh, story-wise and uh, some advice when you quest and so on, you sh uh, go with a pure part, a core party of yourself, of course, with the there, with Suti and with Aloth. That is four. You will have five in total. <clears throat> the fifth one I often swap out depending what quest I do. So. If we talk a little bit more, the rest of the companions you get. Uh, the next companion is Seraphan. He is a cipher. And he is connected to the pirate faction called Principi. So I will bring him all the time when I do the Principi quest. And I recommend you go pure cipher with him. Uh, the next one is Tekeu. He is connected to the Huana faction. And you should bring him. Uh, to all the Huana quests. They're, when you bring the, the, they are actually the, the recommended companions for all the faction quests to bring the faction character you have. Uh, so you should bring him as a pure druid, in my opinion. Uh, you can pick him as a druid chanter or a druid. Can't remember the last class he has, but as I said before, Use them as a single classes, or you will get overwhelmed. Uh, the next one is Paladina. She's a paladin. She can also be a paladin fighter or a paladin chanter. Recommend I go as a pure paladin. And you will actually do. I will actually bring her for all the Valian faction quests. And the last one you get is Magia. Uh, she's a ranger, or she can be a ranger rogue, or a ranger wizard. Uh, at her, I actually recommend her go as a ranger rogue, because that is too good not to go as this. A pure ranger is not that efficient, but a ranger rogue is really, really good. So, when you pick your own character, keep in mind what uh, companions you have. So, if you pick them like I recommended you to do, you have... A fighter, Idir. You have a priest, Suti. You have a wizard, Aloth. That those three will always be with you. Then you have the fifth one. You swap out uh, now and then. It's um, Seraphan, Cipher. It's the Keu Druid. It's Paladina, the Paladin, and it's Maya, the Ranger. You actually get more companions in the game, but they are no, not uh, main companions, they're called sidekicks. And the difference between a sidekick and a main companion is that they, not, they don't have a reputation system. All the others you have reputation with, how you respond to different uh, dialogue boxes and so on. And what you do in the world, they react to that. Uh, the sidekicks don't have a reputation system. And they also doesn't have a personal quest that the other main companions do. And they are not recommended to bring to any quest either. Except if you have the DLC with you installed. Uh, some of the psychics, most, most of them, not all of them, 
are recommended to bring to that specific DLC to get some extra lore and story and so on. So, but for the main uh, game, uh, uh, those are not. They don't have any impact in that way. So, what classes do you not have if you just count the main companions uh, and your uh, core party? You don't actually have a barbarian. You don't have a chanter, you don't have a monk, and you don't have a rogue. As I said, some of them have this as a subclass, a multiclass, but uh, other than that, if you play them as a pure class, you don't have those uh, classes. So if you want to play a class that no one else, you don't have in your party, you can pick from those, a combination of those, or multiclass from those. Uh, a ranger, talk a little bit about them. Um, uh, when I play a ranger, I only take this one that gives you plus accuracy and upgrade this one as a dot. And all these here, I don't take. Maybe this one later on, and some here. But if you multi class it, I don't take any of these spells because. I don't think it's worth it. It's so much about the pet, and the pet is... Meh. Uh, I'm more take the passives here. Uh, Rangers can do some insane crits. Crits a lot, because they have so much accuracy, actually. But they are really good on multi-class, especially with a rogue. So if you take a rogue, look at the rogue here. All these abilities, you don't need to use melee weapon. You can use ranged weapon as well to use them. So that's why it's so really good to use on a ranger combination. And you have something called sneak attack here. Uh, they will do 30% damage with the weapons against targets uh, affected by flanked, body afflictions, mind afflictions. Uh, this is basically any affliction at all or if they are flanked. So you will do 30% more damage. And later on, when you get this one, 50% 50% damage with weapons if the target is afflicted with two or more condition that allows sneak attack. And there's some information here. You have something called crippling strike that will hobble the target. That is an affliction. And if you upgrade it to this one, it will also add an other, uh, another affliction called distract here. So this one alone upgraded uh, will put on two afflictions on the target, meaning you enable this one plus this one when you get it, meaning you will do shitload of damage. And then you give you some other abilities here. So that is a really, really good combination. That is why I recommend when you get Maja, she can actually go uh, Ranger Rogue to pick that. Okay, and as I said, everyone here has a subclass. I'm not going to go through them all because there are so many, and even if I tell you about them, you're going to forget it. So just read what I do carefully and pick the one that is suit for your class and combination. Think it like this. What, do I, what I want to do in the game. Do I want to be a, a weapon DPSer? Do I want to be a melee or ranged weapon DPSer? Or do I want to be a support character that has buffs or debuffs and heals and so on? Or do I want to be the tank? Or do I want to be a ranged caster DPSer? And go from there. Every class here, every combination here is valid. You can play whatever you want. Just keep in mind, you need a pure tank. Yadir is a really good one when you get him. And you need to focus him with just defense abilities, especially in Path of the Damned. Uh, and you need a second frontliner, so it's if you want to play uh, a melee guy, that's a really good choice. If you don't want it, you want to be a backliner, then think when you, you as a second. Because if you go, as I said, with Adair, Aloth, Suit, and you, and you want to be a backliner, then all you have your three backliners right there, and Adair. So that means that all you bring should be uh, the fifth if you swap out, if you play the way uh, I recommend. 
So Paladina can be a frontliner, of course. Maya is not a good frontliner. She is a ranger. Uh, so Takei is a druid. She is not a good frontliner. Uh, Seraphan, actually, if you want, you can pick him as a barbarian cipher or a barbarian completely if you want. And then he can be a good frontliner with a cipher, uh, but not as a pure cipher. Uh, so you have some of them can be a good frontliner, but if you pick it yourself, you are set to go. It can be done, of course, if you want to play from the back. But you just need to think about what the other character except the deer uh, should be. You don't always need to have two frontliners. You can have four backliners, but then you need some summons, something to tank the adds. Uh, so if you have a chanter with you, uh, you can uh, focus more on the summons, like ogres and so on, to, to tank up some mobs. Okay. Enough about the classes. Uh, so in this guide, I'm gonna play actually a combination of barbarian and paladin, and I'm not gonna take any subclass here. Uh, I don't think they're really good here. Not worth it, and especially not path of the dam. Uh, I'm gonna go with a frenzy ability that give me some buffs, inspirations in the beginning. It's really good. And I'm gonna go with a Paladin. But if you pick a Paladin, uh, it's really important. The subclasses here uh, doesn't have any penalties, just bonuses. Uh, what you need to think about here is, especially lore-wise, what you pick here, if you are really into the story. You get bonus uh, depending on what uh, let's see if we can see it here. Yeah, so you have some dispositions in the game. You can be like uh, cruel, or you can be benevolent, you can be... Uh, oh, you have many different of those. And Paladin benefits from the subclass you pick from two, and I really hate if you pick options from that they don't like. So I'll explain now when I don't have it in front of me. But let's see if it stands here. Uh, yeah, they have Yeah, so that according to the belief of their order, a bonus apparently is applied to defenses based on how well the paladin's reputation aligns with the orders Prefer, preferred behaviors. So you can read a little about uh, about the behaviors here. What I like. Uh, so you will get the my uh, if if you pick for example kind warfarers. Uh, a la I know they due to be uh, bevel <laughs> can't pronounce it bevelment a really nice guy or fiery guy uh, fierce guy. Uh, and I don't, that I really don't like if you're cruel or hateful, uh, aggr aggressive, I think. So if you are those in uh, different dialogue boxes, you actually get <laughs> less from this, from the, the, uh, the bonuses. And you get more from it, even if you upgrade it, if you're following them. So keep that in mind when you pick a subclass. Uh, personally here, I will go with kind warfarers. Uh, the game's Flame of Devotion. Flame of Devotion heals nearby allies white flames. So when I use this ability, it actually heals nearby guys and it's quite a lot. So it's an extra heal when I do damage. So that's a really, really good one. And I, re I want to play as a nice guy, so that's why I take this. Uh, I don't think it's only. Yeah, Bleak Walkers believe in extreme brutality in where warfare brings conflict to swift close. So, this one, if you want to play a bad one, 
if you care about that. Uh, okay. Hey, I'm going to take a sworn enemy here. So, when it comes to stats, uh, what to think about. Uh, might is a really good stats if it actually the stats that affects everything regarding healing and damage for all classes. Uh, both casters and melee dam damage and range weapon damage. So every he ev all healing, all uh, damage, it's depending on might. Uh, it doesn't scale really that much, but I uh, really, if you play a healer, it's really m uh, very important to get high might. Uh, for this character, I will just get some here, 15 points. I, w I am going to be a frontliner. Uh, I want some extra HP. It's not a great stat, but yes, like that something. Dexterity, extremely important here because it will make uh, it's, it's your action speed. So the faster you will hit. So I will max that out almost like 18. Uh, I'm not that concerned about intelligent, even if it's area of effect here. Uh, yeah, something like that. I will lower resolve. Hostile effect duration is added to me. Get some deflection. Let's see. I'm not that concerned about that because I really want high perception. Uh, actually, I want more perception. Here we lower constitution. Like that. Perception is one of the most important stats for all classes. Maybe not for a tank or for a pure healer buffer. But it gives you accuracy. Accuracy is really, really good. So you hit spells uh, and abilities. Especially in Path of the Damned. If you don't hit, you don't do anything. Uh, other than that, it's really good for detecting traps all over. It can be a really pain in the ass uh, if you don't detect them. Uh, and you run into them all over and get injured. Uh, and when, if you get injured, the only way to remove injures is to rest. Rest is quite cheap, so you can rest all the time if you want. But on Path of the Damn difficulty, uh, it's really recommended to have some really good food buffs on you. To be really efficient, because food buffs can be incredibly powerful. And it can be really high cost to all the time uh, rest till the beginning of the game uh, later on as well but so I want to have my buffs up as long as possible and not replace them all the time so that's and um, perception is really good for us well done to see traps and also you detect uh, hidden treasures all over the place that can be really good to find some hidden stuff uh, and it's also used a lot in different dialogue options and so on to have high perception checks. So this is a really, really good stats to have on all character. Not the best on a tank or maybe a pure healer buffer. But other than that, prioritize that. Prioritize that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think I'm quite good with this. Uh, where I'm from. We get some extra stats depending where you're from. I want some extra might, I guess. Uh, here you can pick uh, your job. You get some uh, extra hair on your passives or your active abilities you have. We'll talk more about them later. But as a personal choice, I always go a guy that has mechanics. Uh, on myself. Mechanics is really good to disarm traps, to uh, pick locks and open doors and so on. And you're always gonna need one me high mechanic guys in your party. Uh, as I'm always... Uh, I always bring myself, of course, everywhere. So that's why I like to have high mechanics for myself. Uh, it's totally up to you. You can have it on some other guys, but uh, that's my 
personal preferences. So I will go all in on mechanics on my, uh, my guy here. Okay, let's talk about weapon and weapon proficiencies. So you can use all the weapons in the game, even if, if you're not proficient with them. And what the weapon proficiency do is they actually give you a modal. Uh, a modal is a button on your action bar later on, that be to the farthest right, you can click turn on and off. And what the mo this modal do is actually a trade-off. Uh, it will give you some buff on something and a negative effect for something else. So it's not always too good to have that turned on. So for an example here we can take a dagger. A dagger will give you uh, deflection bonus. It doesn't say the numbers here, so that's quite stupid because even if you right click you can't see what it actually do. It's just a description what it do. You can see it in game later on if you pick it. So I will tell you what to do here. So it will trade damage, you will do less damage, I think it's 15% or something, can't remember in my head, but it will give you a 10 uh, deflection bonus uh, if that's turned on. So this is actually a really good tanking weapon. I know it feels kind of stupid if you go with a dagger as a tanking weapon, but it's actually one of the best uh, <laughs> weapons for tanking. Um, so we can take a look. So I want to categorize weapon in three ways. You have debuff weapons, you have buffing weapons, and you have damage weapons. So this is a buff weapon. It gives deflection to yourself. It won't do uh, anything on the target you're hitting. So this would be good for defense, especially on the tank. And you don't that concern of doing damage, so you will trading damage with deflection is really good. So it's all benefits here, actually. Uh, access, uh, battle X. This will put a dot uh, damage over time effects on the target that will do more damage uh, on it, of course. In the cost of you will attack slower, meaning this model is good to put on on a, a bigger creature that has more HP and takes longer time to uh, get down. Or you can, if you really want to uh, micro your things, is have it on, hit one time, turn it off, then have it off until the dot is gone and then turn it on again. Uh, on again. Uh, it's too much job to keep up, but it's, it's good on uh, high creatures with high uh, health, it's not that good on a smaller target that die fast. It's also, uh, that is a DPS weapon I call it. Uh, clubs, it will give, is a debuff weapon. Actually do uh, lower the will defenses when you hit them uh, and you do less damage. So this is also good to have on a frontliner. Will defenses is uh, often targeted by ciphers and spells like paralyze uh, ciphers. Cipher al almost all cipher spells target will defense uh, because this affected the minds like mind control and all that. So if you have a hard time hitting with those spells, you can have a frontliner, or if you are a cipher yourself as a frontliner and with a really good as a club weapon to lower the will defenses. So it's a debuff weapon. Same with Flays here. It will lower the reflexes. So if you have a, have a backliner that casts like fireballs and stuff like that, the target's reflex. It can also be good as a, uh, on a front, frontliner character to have as a tank or if you dual wheel, for example, and want to debuff both of these, have one of each to lower the will defenses and the reflex defenses, and you will do a little bit damage. So a debuff weapon as well. Same with hatches. Also a debuff weapon. Uh, I think you lower their uh, uh, accuracy actually. Uh, it can be really good to have on the backline as well. Because uh, if you for example are on the backline using a bow here, a war bow, 
It says here unfit for melee, you have minus 10 deflection. So if you get a mob on on you when you stand with the warbow, or I think it's for every here. Yeah. Ten deflections. Not for this one. For, for all bows. Uh, yeah, even this one. Ten deflection against melee. Not for blunderbuss and pistols, it seems, but for all these ones. So if you have standing with this one and someone hope on you, get on you, uh, you need to swap weapons or they're gonna kill you right away. Often. So a hatchet can be really good because you lower their uh, aim, their uh, accuracy. So uh, it's easy to try to get away to the, uh, get away from them and put on your bow again or whatever. Uh, maces are one of the best weapons in my opinion to have on. It is a debuff weapon as well, but uh, I use it often on my DPS as well. Uh, because what they do, the modal, it will lower their armor by one in the cost of recovery time, so you will hit slower. As I said before, armor is the one of the most important stats in the game, so you want as many abilities as possible to lower the armor to do more damage. Uh, so, this is a really good DPS weapon to have. Uh, and if you check here, for example, this is a DPS weapon, in my opinion. Because it, it increases your accuracy at the cost of recovery. Uh, so you will, if you target a mob that has high on deflection, uh, it can be good to turn on. Uh, even other to, to do more crits and so on. Sabers, same here. A really good DPS weapon. Because you will get uh, a higher armor penetration value. Uh, so when we talk about that... The most important thing when you pick weapons, especially for your characters that will, will do damage with weapons, uh, it's to have weapons that can do the different uh, damage types. Uh, damage types is Crush. As you can see here on this icon, so Maze is to Crush damage only. If you check Sabers, it will do Slash damage. And you can check stilettos here that we do pierce damage. Uh, and when you look on the penetration value here, it's 9 for stilettos, it's 9 for maces, and it's 7 for sabers. Meaning, for example, if you use a stiletto here, if the target you're targeting have 9 armor, and this one has 9 armor penetration, you will do 100% damage. If the target has 10 armor and you are one below you will do 25% less damage and if he has 11 you will do 50% and you have 12 you will do minus 75% less damage uh, that is the maximum so even you if you have minus 6 or something you will still do 25% damage so that's why armor penetration and armor is so important in this game to be efficient and when you pick uh, the weapons that you want to do DPS with, you need to consider the damage type and you need to consider the penetration. Uh, so Maces has 9 and Stilettos has 9. It is really, really good. Sabers and Stilettos, we can take a look at that first. You can get even higher penetration uh, at the cost of the recovery time. So... If the target, for example, has 10 armor and you have only 9, you will turn that on to do 100% damage. If the target has 8 or below, you should not turn it on because you already have the full damage. You don't want the, the, the uh, recovery time added to you. Uh, you can actually do 30% more damage if 
you are doing the double uh, value of penetration. So for example, if you use stilettos here, and uh, the target has four penetration, uh, you will do you will do a double penetration. What this armor is, you will do 30% more damage. Also to consider here, if you crit on the target, you will automatically get 50% more armor penetration to your current hit. So for example, if you if you crit with this stiletto, you will do yeah like 14, I think. Uh, it's rounded down armor penetration for that for that specific hit. So the most important have high armor pen have different uh, types of damage when you DPS. Uh, the other debuff weapon is really good if you want others to DPS better so keep that in mind. So if you want to go like the classic sword and board characters, swords are actually not that good at all for a tank because it will lower here. Yeah, it will lower your deflection at the, uh, and it will higher your penetration. And you're not really concerned to do damage with your tank, uh, but you're concerned to be alive. So this is kind of useless for a tank actually. You can still use a sword and don't have this model, of course. And uh, that will turn it on. That's perfectly fine if you want to have a sword on your tank. But this model is not good at all for a tank because of this. It's more go good for a DPS character. It will do slash MPS damage as kind of low penetration. Uh, but you get, I think it's plus one or two you get. Turn that on, and there are some really cool swords in the game. So, but don't use it on a tank. A spear, uh, you is really good for a tank actually. It'll give you an extra engagement. Engagement is basically the only tanking mechanic you have to keep the mobs on you all the time. Uh, you have a limited amount of engagement you get plus one for spears i think you get plus one yeah when you're using a shield and you have abilities and so on like a warrior a paladin i think to have plus engagement so if you have like if you have two engagements and you have three monsters on you so two are engaged to you meaning that if they run away you will hit them an engagement attack or attack as opportunity is called in other games but it's called an engagement attack here or disengagement attack actually uh, but the third that you're not engaged to can freely run away from you uh, it won't happen anything so and those who uh, will run away from your tank uh, if the backline do a lot of damage to them more easily than the one that are engaged to them so that that's the ca tank mechanic so you want as many engagement as you can as a tank to keep them on you. So spear is really good for that. And it just gives you a penalty to stride. Stride is how fast you run. Uh, so it's not that important. The tank character you almost always stand still anyway. Uh, so and you also have weapons as I said here with two different uh, types crush and a pierce for warhammers for example and if you have like that like sword has for slash and pierce it will use the most beneficial for you so if the target is uh, vulnerable to crush damage it will use that and same for the pierce damage if it's immune to crush it will use a pierce and vice versa so keep in mind all of that so let's talk a little bit more about the other weapons here. If you want to be a rare uh, characters that do damage with ranged weapons and focus that, uh, keep in mind that all bows and firearms, bows, the first two bows here, are pierce damage. And all the firearms are pierce damage. 
And many mobs are immune to pierce damage in the game, so you need to have an additional damage, additional damage type. And war bows and hunting bows are good for that because you have slash damage as well. And here as well, it comes down to the penetration. Hunting bows are have only six penetration, that is quite low, especially in Path of the Dam. Uh, so. And the mode for them is, yeah, you fire arrows uh, quickly at the cost of accuracy. So this model is not really good at all. It can be really good, but then you need a character with really, really high accuracy. And you really need to have mobs, monsters debuffed and lower the defenses for it to be really good. Uh, so lower the armor and you need to have high accuracy as a ranger for example have some really good uh, abilities to pick to get high accuracy but if you put uh, this one for Suti example you priest that has quite low accuracy <laughs> she will miss everything this one uh, has already a penetration of 8 to pierce and slash damage and this model will actually it will make you attack slower but it will add to armor penetration and that's quite a lot to already eight so you will have 10 with this one it's quite i think it's the highest range you can have uh, these two have some good damage some good penetration but they are more suitable for casters and so on. If you want to have some good, uh, for this example, hits knocks the target prone, and this one hits interrupt the targets. Meaning, it's a really good debuff weapon to interrupt casters in the back and so on. It's not that focused on uh, doing more damage than these two are. So put like a crossbow, I think is the default one for Suti or Priest, uh, so it can be good, really good to have on casters overall. Uh, if you want to interrupt and so on, it's used in two hands, so you don't get the benefit if you want to use a small shield or something, but can be really good. Firearms, same here, to think about, everything is pierce. Uh, the blunderbuss, you get more accuracy if you turn it off cost of um, I think you attack slower uh, yeah it takes longer time really good for high uh, uh, deflection target uh, you crit more with this and if you have a hard time to hit you can turn this on the blunderbusses has really low penetration uh, it will do AOE attacks it has four projectiles hit the same target so Yeah, I think it, it will do, if you turn this model on, you will get distracted a debuff on yourself, but you get uh, to do AOE with them. Can be really good for AOE packs. And the pistol. Also not that good model. It will reload quicker at the cost of accuracy. Uh, you don't want to use that, and there are better ways to get reload time as a chanter, for example. So you have a song to lower that, I don't think it stacks. Uh, so that is not a really good model to use. You can just still use pistol, of course, without using this model. Or if you have a ranger or something with really high accuracy, can be really good. Uh, Magcog implements. Uh, Word to notice: scepters are the only weapon that can use range weapon that can use crush damage. So it's used uh, both. Crush and Slash has quite high penetration, that's 8. Uh, and yeah, you get the increased damage uh, you deal with them. Often you use this on casters and so on, and you're just gonna use it in the beginning uh, of the game. Later on, you're gonna spam spells most of the time. Don't use it that often, so it's not that. 
important. It can uh, be used, of course, but most of the time you will cast spells. Uh, the rod is actually a two-hander, so you know that. Uh, low penetration, and this will do AoE damage if you turn it on at the cost of recovery time. And same for the wand. Yeah, I think you have a higher accuracy if you turn it on, but uh, it will lower. Uh, low interfere with the enemy's ability to attack efficiently at the cost of. I'm not 100% sure what it does, but I think it lowers the accuracy on the target, so it's actually a debuff weapon, one handed. So, two handed uh, range is all the bows, the arquebus, and the rod. The other ones is one handed. Good to know. When it comes to shields, small shields are really good for the backliners, especially casters. It gives you plus four deflection for free, and it doesn't give you any uh, debuffs or anything. It's just for free. You also get one enemy engage. Not that important for a backliner, but small shield is really good to have on the backline for the extra deflection. Modal itself, and I will use it. Yeah, so if they, if they hit you or miss with melee weapons, your next weapon attack will have increased accuracy. Don't really make any sense. I've never used this mode on myself. But to have a small shield on your backline can be really good. So you have like a wand or a scepter in one hand or a pistol or a blunderbuss and a small shield in another one. The medium shield is the most important shield to have on the tank. Uh, it's one of the best tank models in the game. When you use it's called block. Uh, what it do is uh, it will cost the recovery time, so it will attack slower. But what it do is 30% of all incoming uh, weapon attacks will miss. And weapon attacks is not only weapons, it's also like from creatures with claw and all that. So, it's a really, really good and a must-have on the tank to have. Uh, so keep that in mind. The large shield. Uh, I often use that on my backline as well, on my cloth users. Uh, why? Because, okay, it gives minus 8 accuracy. That is not good at all. So, I won't have it on me all the time. Uh, I will have an additional weapon set up, uh, set, set up. So if the, the monsters range guys attack my backline, I will swap to this. So for example, I may have a scepter and a small shield by default, and I get targeted by the backlines uh, with range attack. I will swap to same scepter, but a large shield and turn the model on. What the model though is it will give me high reflexes, so it will be really good against the AOE attacks, fireballs and stuff. And it will also reduce all range uh, damage weapons with 50%. The drawback is I cannot move at all, but I don't really need to move with the backline that often, so I can stand still with it. So don't have it on if you don't need it, swap to it if you need it, it will save your life so many times. So, when it comes to two-handed weapons, uh, it all belongs uh, come down to the penetration here. So, the, most of the two-handed have a higher penetration than the one-handed has, and that's the benefit of them. So, for example, the S-stock here gives you even higher penetration at the cost of uh, deflection. So, be careful if you use it. So. I don't think it's really good to have characters that only use two-handed weapons. Uh, if you uh, if you have uh, two one-handed weapons and you can get up to the penetration level, same as the armor as on the target, you will do more damage with two single-handed weapons. If you can't get up to the armor penetration value, 
then you can swap the 200 at do and that's the beneficial most of the time to use a 200 weapon so a combination is really good to have so this can get up to 12 i think in penetration or 11 can't remember but it only has 10 as default and does pierce damage the great sword has quite low penetration seven and the character swinging the great sword with massive force increasing damage at the cost of accuracy so what it does is it will give you 30 percent increased damage but uh, at the cost of accuracy i think it's 10 or 15 or something that it's a lot and it has a low armor penetration value so if you're going to be it has the potential to do most of the damage of any weapon here actually but to be to do that you really need to penetrate to do that you really need to debuff the, the target you're hitting uh, maybe it's vulnerable to slash or pierce to get below the penetration value and you really need to have some high accuracy for it to hit most of the time you will not do good damage with this it can have really good potential and do really really good damage but in path of the dam it's really really hard in lower difficulty on the game it's really good to have but on path of the dam it's much much harder uh, morning star so it will do crush and pierce damage have a high penetration of nine so it's also a good weapon to do some uh, good damage uh, it will lower the fortitude i think by 20. uh it will do less damage if you turn it on but the fortitude targets poison disease uh, and so on so if you have a backliner or some melee that uh, wants to put on that uh, have a spells and you miss a lot if you swap to that put that on a boss or something minus 20 fortitude is huge you have a, a much easier time to put on those kind of spells and abilities so it's really good for that it's a really good debuff weapon uh, pike uh, can't really remember exactly what it does expose the weak points to your allies at the cost of reduced damage so you do less damage uh, i think it lowers their deflection value i don't can't remember how much so if you have a heavy melee setup that does uh, or heavy weapon damage group uh, it would be really good to have that on to lower the reflection uh, so you will do more damage uh, a pike uh, a polex i mean has also quite good penetration you slash and crush damage so it will increase your engagement so it's really good for a frontliner especially for a tank uh, in the in the start of the game and to mid game on your main tank uh, you should have a medium shield and some of a weapon uh, debuff weapon uh, or a dagger or something or a spear uh, later on when you get really good gear some really good armor and so on you can get away with start with a 200 if you want <laughs> a polex is a really good weapon to use for that because it increases you increase your en engagement same as the shield do so you won't miss out of that uh, and you will do some more damage so your tank uh, in the start of the game you should focus only full on uh, defenses when you get to the point that you feel that i don't take any damage anymore or less than nothing you can start focus doing more damage on him can actually do quite a good damage actually later on but in the start of the game you should not so this can be really good to have you on the tank and also on uh, your other front liner because if they are they can uh, off tank some with it um, stuff can be really good to have on your backline and on your frontline as well uh, as it gives you an, uh, a huge amount of deflection I think it's 20 
in a cost of recovery time. So this can be really good to have uh, on your off tank. And it have 8 penetration, quite good, crush damage. Uh, it can be good on your backline as well, if you have a bow or something uh, and you get someone on you, you want, as I said before, minus 10 deflection against melee weapons. And if you swap out of this one, turn the model on, actually go plus 20 deflection. So it's 30 deflection in just swapping a weapon. That will make a huge difference. Uh, okay, so this will end my first video. Uh, I'm just gonna continue, just finish my character here. So, what weapons do I want? I actually want to have a polex on this one. I think it's cool. And um, as I want to have a mace on him, uh, you will actually get you have, you get two now to pick from. Uh, some subclasses you get three, and another subclass you just get pick one uh, for the tie game on a warrior uh, fighter. But uh, all other subclasses and races you get to pick two here now. But you will get I think it's five more during the level up. Uh, during the game, so not be that costly if you have to pick the wrong one here. Let's uh, see. So we have. No, I don't want Mesa sets to start with. So we have Slash and Crush. I may want a DPS piercing here. Uh, yeah, go as. I want. Yeah, we can go a Warhammer on this guy. So then I have all the different types I need at the start of the game. It shows my portrait here. Fine. No prisoners. Charge. Take them down. And my name is Gulbulan. Okay, I'm all done here. Uh, in the next coming videos, I'm gonna continue playing this character. I'm gonna show more of uh, mechanics in game and so on. Uh, she will a bit more of that. So for now, thank you for me and uh, have a nice day.